today I'm going to talk about a, a, avoid spreading disease through your irrigation system. Um, and I would like to first start by showing some of the um, some of the the major um, non-parasitic disorders or, or non-living problems that affect uh, ornamental nursery plants. And you can see here I've listed uh, five of the the top. And of course, water imbalances um, is is actually the number one issue that we see here in in South Florida. And primarily, what happens is, especially from a commercial uh, production standpoint is that these growers want to grow a plant fast and they want to get it to a quality that they can sell as quickly as possible. And of course, uh, the mentality is then to overwater the plants. And by overwatering the plants, we, we have a lot of issues um, with especially uh, you know, pathogens that, that, that live um, and, and like water. Um, and of course, other problems that we uh, come across down here, nutrient imbalances are, are a really big problem especially in, in situations in the landscape because we, we don't have a good soil um, here in South Florida. But in, in production nurseries, um, we do come across uh, problems with, with toxicities uh, due to either you know, applying too much. And, and the problem with nutrient um, imbalances is that when it does happen, it's usually on a, it affects a, a large scale of plants. Um, mechanical injury. Is also a major issue. Um, this this can be brought on by storms, just through uh, wind damage, um, things of that nature. Chemi chemical toxicities, of course, phytotoxicity from from uh, pesticides, uh, herbicide drift, or using the inappropriate rate of, of a chemical um, can be a can be a serious issue. Of course, um, all of these uh, predispose uh, plants to um, infection by by plant pathogens. And here I just want to show, uh, of course, this is, you can see the risers. Uh, this is a situation where we have overhead irrigation. Um, and you, you notice there's a lot of uh, chlorotic and dead and dying plants. Um, this isn't really a pathogen situation. This is a, this is a situation where uh, this particular nursery, using overhead irrigation, but then also putting it on a, a timer um, spray program or irrigation program and, and it didn't account for, for rainfall. So here you've got a heavy or a several heavy rain events that come into the area You're, and then of course the irrigation's running at the same time and, and this is just creating um, anaerobic conditions and uh, just uh, degradation of, of root tissue and of course these plants will become predisposed to infection by um, pathogens. Um, here's another situation where you can see um, note the, the water level on the outside of the containers. Um, this is the, the, same, the same situation where you've got overhead irrigation on a, on a uh, time-based uh, schedule. And note how uh, chlorotic or yellow these palms are. If you look at the trees in the background, these palms should really be about that, uh, that green, and, and they're not. They're, they look uh, really washed out. Um, the issue with palms is that th this can take a long time to actually turn around these plants. Uh, you'll get, because of the anaerobic environment, it becomes really conducive for, for uh, root rot pathogens such as pythium. And then pythium gets into the mix and it actually causes a root dysfunction. And it will actually inhibit the palm's roots ability to take up uh, proper nutrition. And, and of course, uh, again, so you've got uh, a nutrient issue and a, a, a disease, and it can, it can take a long time to, uh, to turn it around. Um, so ir irrigation uh, management is, is, of course, is very important for disease control. Um, the idea is, is to be a good horticulturist. Um, the goal is to satisfy water needs for the host plant. Um, I always preach that drip irrigation is much better than overhead irrigation. Um, if you can keep the foliage dry, the better off you are from especially the, the foliar pathogens. Um, and then before I start talking about the, the living pathogens, um, I always like to bring up the disease triangle. In this case, this is a tetrahedron um, because we include man or woman, but basically for disease to occur, you have to have uh, three uh, factors, and that is, of course, a susceptible host, a 
the presence of a pathogen and in favorable environmental conditions. And it's the favorable environmental conditions that really drive the disease. Of course, uh, we play a role in this because we move the plants, we move the pathogens.